Wonderful. All right. So welcome again. And uh, today we are doing our employer showcase with community living organizations in Huron and Perth. There are a few, quite a few representatives on the call today, but first I'm going to introduce you to career and work coach and employer liaison, Tina Buchler, that works here at the Conestoga Career Center in Stratford. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so glad you're here. And uh, for those who uh, maybe aren't here today, but are watching this uh, by video later, I'm so glad you have this opportunity to to listen. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this because um, for the 30 years that I've been working as a career coach, there's a fabulous career in uh, within developmental services. And so many people don't know about it. So when, uh, when we decided to do this showcase, um, I was like, oh, oh can I do it? Because um, when in the years that I've done this, so many of the people on this call have hired my clients and have they've had wonderful careers, uh, opportunities for education, opportunities for growth within the organization. And um, what's also exciting is back in the olden days, uh, my one of my first jobs when I finished university was with community living in Stratford. So, uh, so I've done the job, but I I am excited. So that's why I think it's a fabulous career and so underrated or even not known. So um, I'm excited to have this uh, showcase. Um, we have a, a little bit of a plan. I'm going to start. I'm going to start on by calling on Katie Fox from Community Living South Huron. And Katie's going to give us an overview of like what the organization Community Living is. So Katie, can you start with that? Absolutely. Thank you, Tina. Um, just briefly, I wanted to say thank you so very much, Tina and Christy, for the opportunity for us all to come together today to talk about exciting careers and developmental services in here and in Perth counties. I'm also excited and thankful that Holly Duff was able to join us for Fanshawe College today to talk about uh, the education portion and the apprenticeship program for DSWs as well. So community living started as a direct result of the community living movement back in the 1950s and 60s as grassroots um, response to the need in communities. So back then, uh, people with developmental disabilities uh, lived in institutions away from their community and families, and parents thought to themselves, there has to be a better way. And so each of our individual organizations mostly started as a parent group who advocated for their children uh, to live at home and to be full citizens in their communities. And so this journey continues on today and it looks a little bit different in all of our communities, but on the whole, we do some of the same things. And that is to provide uh, supports to adults and children with developmental disabilities right here in our communities to live and work, play and participate in whatever they choose. And so the, the DSW role um, will look similar um, but the schedules might look different or the programming might look different from one community living to the next. We are all nonprofit um, organizations uh, run by a volunteer board of directors, and we are funded by the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services, and sometimes that funding isn't quite enough, so we each have our own uh, fundraising um, in communities to enhance the supports that that we provide. And so, you know, the role is to help people with um, activities of daily living, independence, building skills. Um, that can be everything from personal care, medication administration so, to some of the more fun things like volunteering, employment, um, getting involved in the community, staying in touch with families and friends and reaching their goals. So um, if you're looking to make a direct positive impact in your community, this is the role for you. Thank you very much, Katie. Um, so next, um, I want to uh, invite Sarah Rock to speak. Sarah is with Community Living Stratford and Area. And so Sarah is going to talk about the actual developmental service worker role. And she is ideally suited because I know that she has done the hiring of DSWs. She's done this training of DSWs. And she actually is teaching a course at Fanshawe for the DSW course. So if anybody knows the job and the role and the, you know, the left, the right, the up and down of it, it's Sarah. So Sarah, can you just do an overview of actually the developmental service worker role? Well, thank you for that introduction, first of all. I feel kind of old. Um, I've been 
I have been with Community Living Stratford for 17 years now, uh, which is hard to believe. So I have definitely done lots of hiring and training and orientation. And uh, now, thankfully, um, I get to teach at Fanshawe as well. So I, I've seen a lot. And it's funny, uh, Katie, I was listening to you. And I think you really did, in the end, sort of encompass what the DSW role is. Um, it's everything for someone we support. Your, your job every day is going to look different, which is one reason I've stayed for 17 years, because the variety in what we do every day is, um, is amazing. You know, the DSW role does truly encompass helping someone with those fundamental daily skills. Uh, it might be helping someone, you know, with their hygiene, learning, you know, how to do things for themselves, creating that independence, uh, helping prepare meals, helping people to cook meals, you know, helping with finances, helping someone to go to the bank for the first time, being involved in their community, helping build social roles, helping someone get a job for the first time. It's it's so much about what we do in our lives every day is the joy of what we get to do for people that we support every single day and what they do. Our biggest thing is helping people to understand who they are, what they want for their life, and how do we help them to get there. One of the analogies I use, which sometimes sounds a little bit cheesy, but I think it creates a visual is that the people we support if we think of them as the bus driver and we are sitting along as the passenger helping to navigate the twists and the turns and the bumps and the curves, but they're really in control of their life, what they want, their dreams and goals. And we are just lucky enough to be alongside while that happens. There's lots of practical stuff um, like Katie talked about and I sort of talked about with a DSW, you get to learn, you know, documentation and what does that look like and how do we do it respectfully and appropriately. Um, giving medications, again, how do we do that in a way that works for the person and is done safely and appropriately. Finances, helping someone at medical appointments, there's such a vast um, area that we cover as a DSW. And again, it's, it's definitely a job that you will be challenged. But when you're challenged, you're going to leave at the end of every day and think, I made a difference in someone's life. And it could be helping someone do their zipper up for the first time, which for those of you who are new to the career might sound sort of trivial. But for someone we support, that could be just such a huge monumental thing. We do a lot in developmental services in our community. We are role models for other people in our community on how people we support should be treated, how they should be accepted and included. It's a huge part of our job as advocates. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of change in 17 years and there's so much more to come. And to be part of that is extremely exciting. Now with the apprenticeship program as well, which I know Holly's going to talk about, uh, the DSW and then the DSW apprenticeship program, what an amazing way for people in our sector as a new DSW or someone who's been in the field for a while to get the education they've always wanted and continue to work and be supported. So the doors are opening in this field and I truly do want everyone to understand this is a career. Sometimes we hear things, those of you who are on the call who've been in the field, oh, I couldn't do that. You're so patient. You're so kind. Well, not every day, no, but I am a professional and that's what we do. This is a career. We are professionals and we know, you know, how to, how to manage all of those things. And, you know, I want people to understand that this is a field of choice. It is a career and it's growing and it's changing and who knows what's ahead for us, but you definitely want to be a part of it. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, it, you did well. I worked with community living. It was all those things. So thank you. Christy, over to you for a moment now. So I'm actually just going to tag in some other people. I really want to hear from each of the organizations themselves in their area. Show us who's where and what. And I'm going to start first with Laura. Laura represents community living in St. Mary's and area. Hi, everybody. Thanks for uh, putting together this call. It's a great opportunity for all of us to share a little bit more information about the field and our specific agencies. So thank you for that. Um, our agency really prides itself on supporting people individually. So we actually don't run any group homes or day programs at all. And we really, like Sarah was saying, are the, you know, giving the person the bus driver role and following their choice and their lead 
in how they want to live. And for most people that's on their own or maybe with a roommate or a cat or a dog or a friend. And we really try to make that happen. So for us in terms of scheduling employees that becomes a little bit more of a puzzle because we're supporting people individually in their own homes. So we do really always often have a lot of part-time hours to fill and we encourage people to start out that way with our agency. That's not to say we don't have full-time opportunities come up as well, we certainly do, but many employees start their journey with us in a part-time role and are able to build um, as they match with people because we really wanna put that at the forefront too, that employees are rematched with the people that they support so that there's success on both ends. So I think that's kind of maybe how we differ a little bit from other agencies, but um, I'm sure you'll hear a lot of similarities today as well. You know, we really pride ourselves on making success happen for the people that we support, um, really enjoying those small successes and big successes too, and being a part of all aspects of a person's life from daily living chores to developing relationships, going to events and all kinds of things in between. Thank you. Angela, Angela McPherson is coming in from Wingham and Districts. Hi, thanks. Yes, I'm from Community Living Wingham and District and very much echoing a lot of things that have been said as very good job as to what our role is as DSW um, workers. Um, for our area, we do have a larger catchment area because we are a rural area. So we do have a large section of grounds that we cover for supporting individuals within their communities, um, trying to keep people actively engaged in the communities they live in. Um, so our catchment area will go anywhere from Walton, Fordwich, Teeswater, Lucknow, and basically anywhere in between. Um, we do have 24 seven residential locations that we do support. So that offers um, some flexibility for staffing for difference of hours um, based on what works well for them. Um, our agency, we offer a universal placement for staffing, which means that you can work at multiple locations as well as you can work at multiple departments within our agency. So you can work in working with people in their apartments, in their homes, in supported independent living, you can work with uh, community participation and you can also work in residential, which gives a little bit of variety to people's um, weekly schedules. And you can build your schedules very similar to um, what was echoed before based on the needs and um, who's compatible with the individuals being supported. Yeah, lots of different roles within our agency that are constantly vacant. It's definitely um, an ever-changing um, transitionally schedulize um, based on the needs of the individuals and what their interests are. Um, we're constantly adapting schedules to meet their needs, which opens different positions as things arise. Can I just ask, so is there a consistency there just while it was on my mind? Um, so when you're working, um, so say you're working with someone in particular, um, that partnership, as you said, is about compatibility and, and, and so you said part-time and sort of casual, but it, when you're working with someone, is there a consistency there? Does that, how does that look? Yeah, so you can consistently hold a position with one person if they had hours within the community and you would consistently help them navigate what their uh, goals and interests are and keep them engaged in the community that way. As well, um, the flexibility I'm talking is you can hold uh, you, you don't have to have a sole position in one residential location. You can work at multiple of residential homes and you can do a variety of working in our cell department, community participation, as well as residential to get a variety. Um, allows a little bit of flexibility for staff to build their schedule on what works for them and also what works for the individual. That's nice, I like that. Especially if you have uh, families that have a, a commitments elsewhere, the, the ability to navigate the change uh, now I'm going to call in Brooke. Brooke is coming from Central Huron. There we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Christy, um, for bringing us all together today. This is wonderful. So um, as far as uh, the Central Huron Agency here, uh, we operate out of Godrich and we have um, large bulk of our supports are residential services. So 
Um, we have eight residential homes here in Goderich and one in Clinton that we staff 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's kind of the bulk of my, uh, you know, recruitment needs and, and that sort of thing. Um, so within that uh, program, we have full and part-time positions. So our full-time are working, uh, you know, guaranteed those 40 hours a week. Um, and with part-time, we do have a couple of different options. So um, you can be a, a one category where you're guaranteed 20 hours a week as a part-time um, employee or more of an occasional position where um, it might be, you know, one or two shifts per week. Um, and then what we try to do as well um, when recruiting is, you know, if, if we're in an interview with somebody looking to work as a residential support worker, uh, really trying to, um, you know, match someone with uh, someone that we support that would that would be a really um, successful match for for each of them um, for the employee to to be successful as well as uh, with the person and what their interests are um, of course considering staffing needs as well um, and so in addition to that we do also have um, a supported independent living program um, so we have uh, a team of three full-time staff that that um, support people within that program in our community here. And then as well, an employment support program. Um, right now we have one full-time staff in that program um, working, hoping to uh, hoping to grow that program um, some more in the, in the near future, hopefully. And we do also um, have within our agency, a couple of different umbrella programs. So, um, the Huron Respite Network, Community Support for Families, and Community Participation Supports. So these programs, um, the people that are, are, are supported through there can uh, hire individuals um, privately, um, and we, we do the screening process for these individuals then. And then they uh, will work uh, whatever that person needs kind of thing. So if... if um, if a contract worker maybe is just looking to work five hours a week with someone or, you know, 20 hours a week or something like that, it, it, there can be a lot of different options there. So um, they aren't, uh, those employees are, or those individuals aren't employees of our agency, but um, we do the, the screening process and help the families make sure that um, you know, we're, we're crossing all of our T's and dotting our I's there. Um, and then they make arrangements with the, with the, the person um, individually to, to support their family member. Um, so yeah, but like I said, um, the residential um, piece of things is, is a, the bulk of our employee group, um, the bulk of our services. So yeah, it's been a, you know, an ongoing uh, recruitment over the last couple of years, definitely, as I'm sure others can relate to. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. I'm going to bring Sarah back in to talk about uh, Stratford in area um, and then the format. We did have a question in there to just touch on a little bit on the compensation part. I know that we, for each of you, it is a little bit different. I know some of talking are talking about contracts, which would be people who are self-employed taking contracts with the organization, but there are also uh, full-time, part-time roles. Uh, Sarah, if you can touch on Stratford and maybe a little bit about that. Sure. So very similar to um, the other ladies who have shared. So we operate um, supported independent living, um, residential community and employment programs. We also we used to offer a day program, but that has shifted quite um, significantly and amazingly during COVID. So we do still offer some supports out of our day program, but they're very individualized to the people who are attending um, those programs. But we are a unionized environment. Um, so we do hire most of the time when people are coming internally, they do come into a part-time position. However, under our collective agreement, you can work up to 35 hours as part-time during uh, mm -hmm. during a work week, which is pretty amazing. And then once you're hired, you can start uh, applying for full-time positions that are posted. Our, our rotations are kind of similar to what everyone else has said, a little bit all over the board. We work really hard. We have actually a four-week rotating um, schedule. So the reason we do it that way is staff pick up sort of concrete rotations within that four weeks. And they then they know on that four week rotating basis as far out as you know a year from now, they can kind of see what they're working and when. That doesn't mean that they can't pick up additional shifts on top of that and build their schedule and add to their rotation um, 
as they grow with the agency. We also offer a lot of cross training opportunities. So if you work, you know, supporting person A and B, and then you decide to pick up some shifts and do some training in another um, home with some other individuals, we do uh, offer that as well. So you have a bit of variety in what you're working as well as we're ensuring that the support needs for everybody we support are met. We very much try and set schedules again, um, like everyone else said, around the needs of the people we're supporting. And those can change and flex as people change and, and move in their lives as well, or perhaps there's medical issues or things like that. So teams are very good about having those discussions. How do hours look? Um, you know, are they working? All of that. Um, our part-time start we just had our grid just change, so forgive me if I'm off by a couple cents, but ours, uh, our part-time start at 1984 an hour, um, and again, you can work up to 35 hours a week. You can pick up a rotation under our collective agreement. Our full-time start uh, just over $21 an hour, um, and obviously that goes up um, with your time of service with the agency. And... Full-time, we do offer benefits, uh, sick leave, vacation, um, all of that sort of great stuff. And we have a couple partnerships with the Y in town where our employees get a discounted rate, which is great. Um, we're big on being part of our community. And as much as we ask of the community, we try and give back. Um, so our agency tries to be involved with some fun things that happen um, in our community as well. But we do have some partnerships that uh, that benefit the staff um, that work for us. So again, very similar. All of our um, the staff that we hire, they do whatever it is the person uh, that they're supporting on shift. So it might be supporting them to get up in the morning and start their day. It might be an overnight position where you're there in case there's an emergency. It might be going to the hockey game on Friday night. Um, we are 24 seven, so shifts are available, you know, across the board, again, creating some of that flexibility for people who might like to work something a little different. Thank you, Sarah. Back to South Huron, Katie, what does it look like there? I think, I think Sarah stole my spiel, almost every word, almost every word she said, um, we operate very similarly here in Community Living South Huron, so we serve South Huron, but we also serve here in East, Blue Water, and a part of North Lambton as well. So again, just like Angela had said, a, a broad geographical location. Currently, we are hiring for part-time and full-time staff. Um, in And much as the other people have said here today, um, we are 24 hour, seven day a week operation and our schedules are based on the needs of those supported. Um, we do have a four week rotational schedule, much as uh, Sarah said. So if you are looking for a set of um, predictable, um, regular hours, we have that. Um, we call them lines. We have small lines, which it would just include every other weekend. And we have larger lines that would also include every other weekend, but maybe two, three uh, shifts a, a week. And, and like Sarah said, you could look forward to next summer. And if you've got a week, you got something going on on a weekend, you can plan ahead that way, which is lovely. We also take part-time staff on and it's really great for people who are just starting to get their foot in the door as a float staff. And that just means that you don't have a line or a regular set of hours, but you pick up shifts through a call and list process so you can work around what's going on in your life, as well as all our part time staff are able to let us know when they're not available so that they don't get calls on Wednesday nights while they're taking their kids to hockey. Um, and so there's lots of flexibility that way. We do have one full-time temporary nights, overnights position in Seaforth right now. So we're looking to hire in both Exeter and Seaforth right now while our admin um, building here in Dashwood in the kind of in the middle of nowhere, but that's okay. Um, our compensation, our part-time staff on probation start at 21 uh, 90 an hour and our full-time staff are up around 23 just like Sarah said our grid just changed and it's not quite fully in my brain but if you have any specific questions that way I'm happy to get the 
the real numbers for you there. Um, some of the benefits of Community Living South Huron would be we do offer the apprenticeship program. Uh, we have an EAP. We offer full-time benefits to our, or full-time, we have for our full-time staff, a, a comprehensive benefits package. We have a, a, a very active mental health and wellness uh, committee um, that puts out resources and, event and events, and we're happy to share that uh, coming up. Just next week, uh, we're having our very first staff appreciation uh, barbecue with our mental health and wellness committee where, where it's just a, a nice event for uh, staff and their families to reconnect after the pandemic because people haven't seen each other in, in quite some time. So we are a unionized environment as well, just like Stratford. And that means we have a collective agreement that dictates some processes and procedures um, for job postings and things like that. So you have to, we have to post internally before we post externally, but we have a number of positions that are available right now. And we would be able to show you the hours that you could be working. So um, I think that's about it, not to repeat everything that Sarah has said. And I think uh, it, you know, there's a it highlights that there's lots of different kinds of opportunities that fit different people's lifestyles. And so, if you want to have a conversation, everyone on this call is eager to talk to you. Um, I definitely, I just want to quickly. Um, North Perth was also going to attend. I don't know if they snuck in under a name I'm not familiar with, so I'm going to just put it out there. Um, but we also in um, Perth and here on County have North Perth, which covers the Listwell area. Um, and so it taps a little bit uh, into also towards our other house, which is in Kitchener and Waterloo. So um, I do have contact information um, if, and they're not on the call, but we can definitely share that for the future. Now, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to, I don't know if Ho uh, Tina wanted to introduce, but I'm going to pull in Holly. <laughs> Holly's here from Fanshawe. Uh, Fanshawe College offers the Developmental Service Worker Program and an apprenticeship. Um, so here to explain how that works, Holly Duff. Hi, uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm always excited to talk about uh, the DSW Apprenticeship Program. It's one of the best kept secrets and it's uh, so wonderful that we get to partner with all these agencies and uh, work together to uh, help develop uh, employees and people working in the field. So the DSW apprenticeship program is very similar to the same idea of any apprenticeship. Uh, it's the idea that you're working on the job, so you're learning skills while you're working, plus you're also learning theory and concepts uh, in school at the same time. So the way the apprenticeship program works at Fanshawe is that you find um, an employer agency. So any of these agencies that are on the call right now, you start working for them and you have a conversation with them and tell them you're interested in doing the apprenticeship program. And if they're on board, then you sign up with the ministry and the link to sign up with the ministry, I believe will be available in the links uh, after this uh, recording. Uh, so you go to the ministry website, you sign up to be an apprentice, the ministry will review your application, check with your employer, say, are you on board with this person doing the apprenticeship program? Your employer will say, absolutely. And then your file comes to Fanshawe College. I reach out to you and I say, welcome to the apprenticeship program. So what that program looks like is that you have to complete uh, 3,712 hours of on-the-job training. So that's hours that you're working at your job, learning skills, getting trained, doing the job, earning money. And just as a point of reference, if you work full-time for about one year, that's around 2,000 hours, okay? So just to give you a frame of reference for how long 3,712 hours might be, um, there's no time limit, or I think the time limit might be seven years, so you have lots of time to uh, accumulate those hours, but that might be give you an idea of how long it might take you to, to complete that 3,712 hours that you're, is while you're working at your employer. In addition to that, you need to complete about 20 courses at Fanshawe College. And those courses are very, at any college, but I'm going to talk about Fanshawe College. Those courses are very specific uh, to developmental services. Uh, so what that looks like at Fanshawe College is um, if you were to start in January, for example, your cl classes would be on Thursdays sometime between 8 and 4 p.m. and they would be delivered over Zoom uh, and you might have the option of attending in class as well. We're still working with that piece, but they would be available over Zoom so you could open up your computer, log in, and you would see your class and your faculty and the class would be, you know, your class would be on Thursdays. 
And that would take you doing classes, two classes a semester, fall, winter, and summer would take you about three years to complete all the courses. So you know your courses would be on Thursdays. Um, the classes are three, typically three or two hours. So this fall, the classes are from nine till noon, noon to three. Sometimes it might be a little bit shorter, but just to kind of give you an idea of what that would look like. We also offer classes on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, so you can pick up additional classes sometimes if, if, if that works into your schedule. Classes are recorded, um, but there are times when you have to attend class because you're demonstrating, like attend the virtual class, the Zoom class, because you're demonstrating a skill or there's a presenter or something like that. And we do know that students who attend the virtual classes tend to be more successful. But if you miss a couple, they are recorded, so that is available to you. Uh, so cost, the big bonus to the apprenticeship program is that the courses, which would typically, they're exact same courses that we're offering in our diploma program, but in the apprenticeship program, they cost you between 50 to $100 per course. If you were to take those in our diploma program, the exact same course in our diploma program, they'd be about three, $400. So that's the benefit of doing the apprenticeship program is it's um, the ministry is subsidizing the cost significantly. So all in all, your tuition by the time you complete all your courses is going to be around $2,000. And when you complete all your courses and you complete your on the job training hours, the ministry will actually give you a $2,000 completion grant. So your, your training is, is pretty much covered and you get your apprenticeship certificate. Um, I also wanna mention that uh, at Fanshawe College, if you're an apprenticeship student, you do qualify for accommodations. So if you had an IEP or require any kind of learning supports, that's available to you in the apprenticeship program. Um, once you complete your apprenticeship program, if you are interested in getting uh, your diploma, it's an additional six courses. Those are not subsidized. So those are at full cost. Uh, but there's six courses. If you did two, two a semester again, you would complete it in one year. There's also a field placement credit that you have to complete, but if you complete your on the job hours through the apprenticeship program, we'll grant you that field placement credit, okay? Um, I also wanna let you know some of the questions that I get from people who are interested in the apprenticeship program is, you know, is it gonna be too hard? Or is, is, am I too old, am I too young? The average age is 44. We have people who are 16 and we have people who are 64. We have people who've been in the job three months. We have people who've been in the job 20 years. Uh, everybody has expressed that they have benefited from the program. It gives them the education, the theory, the philosophies that really enhance the job that they're already doing, in addition to the great training and experience that they're getting at their organization. And I think that's all the things I was supposed to touch on. Um, maybe, Christy, you can let me know if I've missed there any is a questions. Question. There's only a question that's asking a little bit about eligibility criteria. So eligibility, you have to, um, it is determined by the ministry. So you have to apply through the ministry and they determine your eligibility. You have to have either a high school or a GED um, to apply. We have had students who um, have different backgrounds, like their high school education is in a different country, et cetera. That's up to the ministry to determine the, the equivalency. Okay, so then if we're going to go back to the ministry, I'm going to get Tina back on this call and uh, to talk a little bit about Employment Ontario Services and how we can help connect you with these employers or this training program. Thanks, Christy. So I want to, first of all, say thank you to everybody. You can see why I'm so excited. Like so many of my clients need to have work that works around life, that works around children. They still need to have a good income. They want to be able to contribute. And the thing about working with community living is it allows all of that and it allows them to continue their education. It just is so wonderful when you look at what people are trying to accomplish and, uh, you know, in terms of their career. So community living works wonderful. Um, the Conestoga Career Centre is an Employment Ontario funded organization, which means that we support uh, people to get into the careers and uh, to learn about careers, get into careers, and we support them in the education and finding the job and getting connected. So I have worked pretty much with all of the organizations that are on the call. And what we can do is we have placements where we can do, somebody can try the job and what we will do is help fund that first initial period while somebody's working so they can try the job and see if they actually like it and determine if it's a good fit. 
Um, if there's uh, training that's required, like first aid, and there's things that you need in order to do the job, we can assist in funding to help get that set up so you can meet the minimum requirements. You can uh, um, take the position within the community living as a development service worker. We also will help you get connected if you need to get your grade 12. We'll help you do the online application to do the um, uh, to apply for the uh, apprenticeship. So our job is to help you get there, wherever that is, uh, or take you from where you are to help you accomplish what you want. And then we have uh, funding that can support that. So we have funding to support the individual as well as the organization to transition a person from this is something I want to do to this is something I'm doing, which includes um, signing bonuses to assist employers and in, in motivating employers to get somebody signed so that they can get started on this career. Well, that's us. And uh, we cover Huron and Perth County as well. Um, uh, we, I spend a lot of time in South Huron, which is why I know Katie so well. Um, and But I also cover Goderich and, and areas. So um, I cover Huron County and then Stratford. And then we have other people in our office that cover Perth County and Stratford. So I think that's uh, sort of what we do. Christy, anything that's additional that you think? No, I think uh, I think everyone's asked their question. I don't see anything else in the in the bar, but um, this because this has been recorded, we are going to post it on YouTube and share it. We have a newsletter. Um, I will send this out to everyone that's that's registered today, and you can sign up for a newsletter to get any other employer showcases that are of interest to you. But um, the video will include all of the contact information for everyone you've met today, so that you can reach out to whoever you feel like talking to, whoever fits. But we all work together to try to help. Um, and um, again, any questions, you can reach out by email uh, or phone. And um, we're located in Stratford. But again, as Tina said, we serve here in Perth County. So everybody have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks for coming. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you.